Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got a 2004 Chevrolet, it's a half ton. Uh, it's got the big 4.8 in it, money lights on, and the guy tells me it has rich code. So I think it's a 172, 175, PO 172, 175. Uh, if I remember correctly, could be wrong. Uh, he's been battling this out. They've done injectors, saw all your stuff. Everybody would do, you know, fuel pump and pressure regulator and injectors, and mass airflow and oxygen sensors, and purge valve, map sensor. They changed it all, and here we are. Now, I will say this. I fired this pick up to bring it in, and it blew the biggest blue cloud of oil smoke I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> and he warned me, so it's been doing that for a long time. Forget about it. So I did, but it was pretty thick uh, in the downtown area here with uh, blue haze, uh, Chevy smoke. Got the old Altel hooked up here. Gonna let it go through a fault scan. Uh, we'll see where we're at. And I do see and smell the frustration under the hood here. And then we'll just base our diagnosis off the facts that we find along the way. She's all done, let's see here. 172, 175, so rich bank one, bank two. Restraint codes, HVAC codes. All right, great. Well, so let's go look at some live data. Um, just kind of gather some, gather some stuff here. Let's see. We're gonna go right in here. We're gonna look at fuel trims. Uh, see if there's anything. Coolant temp. We're gonna want to look at coolant temp, engine speed, intake air, anything that that can make it run rich. Uh, we're gonna want map and. Barrel, oh, that's wrong. I'll tell you that's wrong right now. Uh, the barometric pressure is wrong. That could be a problem. Let's see. Oxygen sensors, yeah, we can grab those, make sure everything's good. Our fuel trim, so let's fire this pig up. All right, it's gonna take it a minute here. Uh, did we get the loop status? starting to make some correction, especially on bank one. So that's interesting, it's trying to pull back fuel. Still an open loop. Oxygen sensors seem responsive, except for this guy, seems still kind of at its bias voltage. Not a big deal. Mass airflow definitely seems too high. So this is concerning, this is concerning. So that's very interesting. Fuel trims are pegged out. I think I hear a vacuum leak even. Yeah, I definitely hear a vacuum leak and it's on this purge valve. I, I doubt the camera's picking up, but I can, it's quite obviously making some sucky, sucky sound there. I assume because it's missing the rest of whatever goes under that bolt, the shoulder bolt. That's not going to make a, a lean or a rich condition. Yeah, so right now, fuel, fuel trims are pegged out, short term, long term. That's really bad. Coolant temp looks okay. Mass airflow is definitely over-reporting. Some kind of probably remanufactured junk. Let me uh, grab a light. Yeah, map sensors aftermarket. Perch solenoids aftermarket. Mass airflow, some remanufactured garbage. Well, we got a good place to start, folks. I'll tell you what, folks. Known good. I got a map center here for Chevrolet. 
I believe on these, key on, engine off, our map is also our barrel, which it should be. You know, so key on, engine off, manifold pressure should be barometric pressure. So we could test, but I need to get a step stool. We could test that uh, current map sensor, or we can take five seconds and plug this in, because that's quicker than testing. Come on, plug that one. I'm going to plug that little guy in. I'm going to turn the key back on and we're going to see what barometric pressure is. Go back in here. Go back into our field trim. We'll probably have to pick out our list again. Uh, or we'll just go right to barrel where it was down towards the bottom. Boom. Look at that. 14.07. Not 12 PSI. So that's a problem. Great. i tell you what. Let's be, let's be Mr. Nice Guy. I think I'm a nice guy, Mrs. O. Huh? Yeah, you can be a nice guy. I can be? Or I am? You're a pretty nice guy. I'm a pretty nice guy, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Hey, Mrs. O. Uh huh. When I'm not being a prick. <laughs> What'd you say, Trinity? Nothing. What'd she say? Got to use the uh, little rubber here, folks. Mine didn't have one on it. Stick that in there. Oh, I'm going to keep that in there. All right. Guess what else I got, folks? Mass airflow for a Chevy. Huh? Who is this guy? Got stuff kicking around. We got to get rid of the remanufactured junk here. What's interesting is the amount of parts that they've thrown at this vehicle to fix a problem that they still have. I, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I assume that this thing got injectors and oxygen sensors and mass airflow and maps and all the parts that it got because of this problem. Now I could be wrong. I didn't, uh, I didn't quiz them that heavily on it. Maybe this these parts were changed to fix another problem but created this problem. So yeah, that's obviously uh, some kind of remand. I've just got the old rusty crusty OEM, which is always better than remand. Remand mass airflow sensors, usually you need to buy them by the dozen. So let's see, we'll slip this one in. I'm pretty sure this is a good one. Famous last words. That's not something you want to hear from your heart transplant doctor. Gosh, I'm waiting. Okay. Woo! Woo-wee! Hopefully it's the right one. I think I think these are the same, like 99. 05 or 06, somewhere is in there. It's gotta be. Alright, just fired it up. Let me get the same, let me move you around. We're gonna get the same data that we had. totally wrong on this, and by we I mean us, but we got to be getting better. So Barrow's good, map looks good, let's get our mass airflow, engine speed's still up there a little high, she's still cutting back on the, uh... that's pretty wild, I would have thought we would have made better corrections by correcting the barometric pressure. She's still cutting it back. Let me unhook the purge solenoid here. Just want to make sure it's not pulling in fuel vapors. Very interesting here, folks. Uh, very interesting. So that's pretty interesting, folks. Uh, map is working correctly. Now the idle has come down. Mass airflow is working correctly. Uh, correct readings. There's no fuel being drawn in from the purge, which is a possibility. You know, where can we get this extra fuel? 
uh, things we have to think of are also oil. How contaminated is the oil? You know, drawing through the PCV system, you know, pass the rings. Obviously, this engine is a massive oil burner. Um, you know, so that's something we have to think of also and kind of keep here in our back pocket. I did remove the PCV hose right here, right off the intake, plugged it off. It only changed it four or five percent, went from 30 to like, you know, 25 percent. Uh, so it's not all coming from there. So this is pretty interesting. Now, things we have to, uh, other things we have to think of too is, you know, fuel pressure. Is fuel pressure too high? You know, there's been so many parts thrown at this thing. Could have wrong injectors in it for all I know. Um, I don't think this is flex fuel. Never had an issue with the older ones with the flex fuel sensors, I think, that were underneath. I don't really know how they function. If that can be, uh, you know, if that can screw something up also. Uh, but that's something we got to think about. Uh, rich codes are not that common. And when they are, it's typically uh, over-reporting mass airflow, purge valves stuck open, some common stuff. So I'm pretty surprised to see some things that are broken and reading incorrectly that ultimately haven't made a hoot of difference. So let's do this here, fellas. truck's pretty rough. I just looked underneath it. There is not much left to it. Um, so I don't know how much time we'll invest into it. That's always up to the customer, but see if it's a little bit of a baseline of what's happening here. Hmm. Let's uh, see where we're at with fuel pressure. Let me just turn the key on and we'll just kick the pump on. I just turned the key on there, went up to about 40, 40 to 45. I expect this thing to be about 50 running. Okay, let's go ahead and fire it up. Yeah, about 50 PSI running. That's what I would expect. So that doesn't appear to be abnormal. And I guess the other thing that's uh, noteworthy is the fact that it holds pressure. About 45 PSI. So that seems to be good. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm grab a rag here. I didn't. Uh, let's just give it a little whiff, shall we? Of course, now my hands are soaked with gas. Go so we'll like this. Not over full, it's down about a quart, typical GM. You smell it, it just smells like oil, it doesn't smell super gas soaked. So, this is interesting. So, the only unknown variable here are the injectors. Now, I see they must be of the best Chinesium. There is no numbers, no identifiers, no nothing on those injectors that can help me. To tell whether or not they are the correct ones, um, they sell you know a lot of this crap on eBay and stuff where you know you get 32 injectors for a nickel and you know guaranteed to fit your vehicle. I'm gonna have to think about this for a minute, folks. Uh, I think we're running out of options, running out of uh, logical things that can cause or induce a rich condition uh, to this degree. Unwanted fuel from the purge, incorrect map sensor, skewed mass airflow, fuel pressure too high, um, PCV system pulling in vapors, making it run rich, or just base engine mechanical, uh, where it's pulling you know tons of tons of oil past the rings. And which, you know, like I say, this thing ripped a big cloud of smoke. It's not blowing big clouds of smoke sitting here, uh, even prior to the catalytic converter heating up. So I'm a little doubtful uh, about that, about base engine mechanical, you know, causing, you know, a, a, an induced rich condition to this degree on both banks. I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to think. I'm going to do some poking. I'm going to ask Google what's wrong with it. See what she says and then I'm going to talk to the customer probably before all of that to ask them when the injectors came into the loop here in an effort to fix this problem or were they put in and then this problem was created that's that's going to be a key piece of evidence 
and then A, customer, where did you get them? And do you have a part number so we can verify? I think we're on that road. One other thing that can be a concern, folks, is software. Do we have the correct calibration ID numbers per VIN? I went on GM Cal ID's uh, site here to make sure everything coincided. The VIN number versus what GM says it should be programmed, calibration numbers, CVN numbers, and everything matches. So it is the correct software for this truck and for that engine. So that, that's always a concern also. Can't get a hold of the customer, folks. Um, and I can't think of anything else that would induce a rich condition. I really want to go down to Wilbur to pull the bath who doesn't sponsor our show and just grab a whole fuel rail and just pop it on here just to see. Um, injectors newer, about 100 bucks a whack, you know, if you get legitimate good ones, you know, like I say, they got the flea bay ones, but I'd really like to know the series of events here because it's quite peculiar that we've got the problem on both banks and we had some issues that we corrected, which is weird also. I need to make a decision. Kaboom, just like that, went down to Wilbur. Still won't sponsor us. And I got these. I didn't have time to take it long, bit of a hurry. I did call Chevrolet with the VIN number of the vehicle that I took these injectors off and had them run this VIN number for the vehicle that we're gonna put these on in about a half a second. Same number, stick around. And the modern television, great. You don't have to sit through the boring repairs of swapping out injectors. So they're in. They're tightened up. I think everything's good. Fuel lines, oh, you know what? Safety third. Where is it? Right here. Almost forgot this. That would have been catastrophic in the event that this blows apart. There's that. I think everything else is plugged in and hooked up. Okay, let's uh, cycle the key here, folks. Could be wrong still, but I got my suspicions. Let's make sure fuel's not going pee pee everywhere. I don't smell it. Let's see how she starts now. Let's go have a look at data. Fuel trim. Hey, what do you know? What do you say, huh? That's what happens when you put cheap junk Chinese injectors in them from the eBay. I say we're fixed. Mass airflow, uh, engine coolant temp, engine speed, map barrel. You gotta follow the facts, folks. Uh, I never did get a hold of this guy, so I couldn't be burning myself because I didn't get authorization to fix this. So if he tells me to pound sand, guess what? I'm out some uh, money and some time. Wouldn't be the first time though, because I know you guys want a closure, and if I told you that I suspected that the injectors are the only thing left, you wouldn't have believed me. Interesting that our mass airflow is still uh, slightly high, but not enough to cause a problem. Better than eight grams the old one was. Uh, but our fuel trim says it all. This engine is running absolutely perfect. We are as close to zero as this old Chevrolet is going to get with the miles and stuff that's on it, plus the amount of fuel that's probably in the oil. I'm happy. And I call it a fix. These are, uh, that's something on there, Moto Most Plus, M-O-S-T Plus, I believe is what it says. Uh, nothing I've heard of before. I think that's what it says. MOST. Yeah, MOST plus something. I'll tell you where they are right now. J-U-N-K junk. I hope we all understand uh, what has happened and the series of events we took to get to where we're at. Barometric pressure was screwed up because of the map sensor, which is where it reads the barrel from key on engine off. The PCM looks and says, hey, you know, where you at? Boop, here, uh, here I am. This is the elevation I'm at. And of course, it takes those calculations also uh, during driving. I think it takes them during wide open throttle events, perhaps. So let's say you're up in the Rockies and you're down here in the Rockies and you're gonna get up here in the Rockies. Well, the, you know, the elevation difference is whatever the difference is. And you know, you're giving the Chevy the full throttle on the way up and it may take some calculations from that. Um, I know Ford does that and they calculate barrel through the mass airflow. I'm not sure GM's strategy, I'm just making stuff up right now, but that's what I would suspect. Some of them have 
they can sense barrel inside the PCM. I think Honda's pretty pretty uh, famous for doing that, having the barrel sensor built into the PCM instead of using map. But I think they also make them relative comparison. So key on engine off, it says, hey, you know, does the boost sensor match the map sensor, which matches the barrel sensor? So they'll, they'll use it for some redundancy, like, hey, you know, if one of these fails, it might throw a flag of code and then use a default strategy of one of the other sensors. So keep that in mind. Mass airflow is obviously skewed a little. I'm, I'm just gonna, we're gonna keep that one in there. We're gonna keep the OEM in there. We're gonna keep that map sensor in there. And then obviously the ultimate fix uh, with our fuel trims here, uh, as we can still see our, our beautiful, worthy fuel injectors. If you want to see some videos on fuel trim and, and how to understand it, uh, I think Wells Electronics or Wells VE, NGK now, uh, Mike Becker over there, I think he does some great videos on fuel trim. Uh, you know, go over there, check out their channel. Sometimes we just jump into it because we can't explain each thing as we go, even though I sit here rambling at the end. Gotta call this guy, see if he wants to fix now. Shame on me, but at least you know. If I gotta put all those old junk parts back in, at least we know when he wants the job done. Uh, but we won't do that, I'd really just give it to him then. Put the old crap back on, because we don't. And what I do know is I want you to go in the comments section. The comments, the concerns, the Facebook, the bell ring, and the insty, the subscribe button. Whatever else you do when you're there. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Bonus footage. I got one of these while I was at the junkyard too, and this is what is missing off the perch. It just goes on the bottom, it's a hunk of rubber because it uses a shoulder pole. We should resolve our ceiling issue that we have down here. So we'll put that shoulder bolt in there and it actually has something to hit against now. Anyhow, for what it's worth.